c'est une énergie gratuite et abondante, le vent. Mais aujourd'hui, il faut renouveler les éoliennes de première génération. Anciennes, moins puissantes, il va falloir leur trouver une seconde vie et leur recyclage est loin d'être simple. in northern Jutland, by far the largest portions of turbines in Denmark are, they are in western Jutland. These are the most modern wind turbines we have in Denmark at the moment. Behind me is a turbine that produces 3.6 megawatt, which is enough to power about 3,000 households. Here we already had wind turbines. Uh, it was old turbines uh, erected in the late 80s uh, and they were obsolete. Some of them were not running, so it was not a well-functioning wind farm. The idea about exchanging the old turbines for new are called repowering. What we do is we, we simply take them down. Some places we reuse the turbines, and then we put up modern turbines, most likely less turbines than the number we have taken down. There's a large concrete foundation under any turbine. In some markets we cover that with soil, and in some markets like Germany, it is actually removed most likely by blasting so that there is no trace left of the foundation. In Denmark, we don't remove the foundations. You are actually allowed to put soil on top of it. Repowering will allow with fewer turbines to have 10 to even 15 times more power production uh, than from old turbines. In general, the, the cost is very much the new turbines, new foundations. You also need to put in new cables because the dimensions of an, of an old wind farm, the foundations, the cables, the transformers, won't supply a modern wind farm. There is a big movement in Europe to do repowering, especially in Denmark and in Germany, where we have a fleet of old turbines that are obsolete. In Denmark, we need to replace at least six to 7,000 turbines within seven, eight years. Both Denmark, but the rest of Europe is short of electricity at the moment. We need more power and repowering is a way of ensuring that we do get more power. If we can increase the power output from a wind farm by six or seven times by doing repowering, that's a really, really good idea. L'éolienne a beau être un symbole d'énergie verte, son espérance de vie est étonnamment courte. En moyenne, 20 à 25 ans. C'est pour cette raison qu'en ce moment en Europe, beaucoup de champs d'éoliennes atteignent leur fin de vie. Installés dans les années 90, lors de la première vague des énergies renouvelables, aujourd'hui, 34 000 de ces géants d'acier ont plus de 15 ans, en particulier dans les pays pionniers comme en Allemagne, en Espagne ou ici au Danemark. Elles doivent donc être renouvelées et ça n'est que le début. En Europe, 50 000 tonnes de pales seront mises hors service chaque année d'ici 2030 et donc potentiellement autant de déchets. En théorie, 85% de la masse totale d'une éolienne est recyclable, que ce soit la base en béton, le mât en acier ou les composantes électroniques. Mais pour les pales, c'est une toute autre histoire et pour l'instant, la plupart finissent en décharge ou incinérées. Alors que la course renouvelable s'accélère, la gestion de la fin de vie des éoliennes sera clairement un enjeu majeur pour la décennie à venir. On our campus, we have quite many wind turbine blades lying around. And those are used for research. I do research on recycling wind turbine blades. Blades are difficult to recycle. The materials that are used in blades, those are not easy to cut um, and those are not easy to separate. A blade is a hollow structure. It is made of different parts. 
Blades are mostly made of uh, glass fibers. 60% by weight of a blade is glass. And uh, plastic, a polymer part. And when you try to expose this material to high temperature in order to separate the fibers from the polymer, um, then the plastic part will degrade, it will not melt, and the glass fibers will be damaged. So they will lose their original strength and good mechanical properties. So our research here is to look at the recycled materials we get from blades. So we want to know their properties um, in order to find uh, new applications for those glass fibers. So the recycled glass fibers have much lower strength properties, which makes them not so interesting for reinforcing new composites. Those parameters, those aspects are not suitable for being reused in uh, wind turbine blades. Virgin glass fibers is very cheap nowadays. It's around 2.5 euro per kilo. Um, but when you recycle a wind turbine blade, you have a lot of processes and the recycled glass fibers coming out of the process are also expensive. The question is, who can use uh, those glass fibers? This noise barrier was installed last year. And this is the second uh, noise barrier we have manufactured with acoustic absorbent material from uh, recycled wind turbine blades. We have installed and uh, generated energy from wind turbines for many years and uh, still nobody had uh, made a plan for what to do with the old blades from the wind turbines. And that triggered my curiosity. Why? have nobody thought about that. We have developed this uh, special uh, process where we're able to produce a fiber material from the, the old uh, blades. Uh, we have developed special ways of packing that. So we get a porose product that um, absorbs the noise instead of reflecting it uh, from the, the road traffic. We have tested this over and over again at, in the laboratory and we also have some on-site measurements of the difference that the noise barrier makes in exactly this, this location. That is measured in close to 30 decibels, which is very, very good for a noise barrier element. Mainstream products in Denmark, they are manufactured in aluminum with an acoustic absorbent material made of uh, mineral wool. And the very big difference between the mainstream products uh, and ours is that, for one thing, we are able to recycle the noise barrier materials uh, several times. But most of all, aluminum and mineral wool, they require a lot of energy to manufacture. And ours uh, only requires less than half of that. What we see today and what we are going to see in the years to come is there's so many more wind turbines and wind turbine blades being decommissioned, so we, we foresee a very large uh, waste issue. Bien sûr, l'idéal, ce serait une éolienne 100% recyclable de la base jusqu'au pal. Alors les géants du secteur repensent la conception de ces géants d'acier pour que les éoliennes installées aujourd'hui ne soient pas des fardeaux pour demain. Here at Siemens Gamesa in Aalborg, we developed the first recyclable place in the world, creating a solution for a problem that has been existing since the, uh, the dawn of this industry. Comparing a conventional blade to a recycled blade is basically of no difference. It goes through the same manufacturing process. It is only at the end of life where you actually see a difference, where we have the opportunity to recycle the blades. The secret to this solution is in the material. We've introduced this new epoxy material, allowing us to actually dissolve the blade after end of life. 
It's comparable to cleaning your coffee machine at home or making pickles. It is an acetic acid, kind of similar to vinegar, uh, for a few hours at an elevated temperature, after which you can actually separate all the materials of the blade uh, instead of having to destroy it mechanically or put it into the ground. While the quality of the recycled glass is still good, it is not to the level where we can use it directly in a blade manufacturing process. However, that is not an issue for the use in later consumer goods, where we don't need the same strength requirements. It could be surfboards, furnitures, any kind of laminates that you will see. We expect to deliver the recycled blade in full scale as an option from 2024. We've already installed the first turbines at the Kaskasi offshore wind farm off the northern coast of Germany. Originally, the recyclable blade was developed and launched for, for offshore use. Now, we have also developed the solution for onshore use, meaning that we can actually cover both land and sea when it comes to energy production with recyclable blades. It's still a new technology, meaning that the prices are right now a bit higher for a recyclable blade compared to a conventional blade. At the same time, you have to remember that we now have a solution that we do not have to go for landfill of wind turbine blades. Being able to deliver clean, green energy for generations to come is an amazing opportunity for, for me as an engineer, as an individual, giving back something to the world. Having a solution like the recycled blade over here only makes it all the much sweeter.